So this is a guide gear wood stove I got off the um, Amazon for about 150 bucks. And I also got some extension pipe, two pieces, which cost me another 30 bucks, which I didn't end up using and probably won't need to, uh, unless the draft starts smoking. So far it's been pretty good. I'll open the door so some smoke comes out. It's not real bad. <clears throat> But it's not real good you can't leave the door open while it's burning for the most part now maybe if i extended the pipe i could <clears throat> so it's a cheaply made stove and for the price i'm very happy with it and i can recommend it uh, the stove pipe they send they do send you about six feet of stove pipe it's actually heavier duty than you might think this is a tent stove it's made to come apart and be portable so keep that in mind it's not something I would want to trust uh, in certain circumstances, let's say. But for camping, I think this is uh, great. I'm really happy with it for the price. It started rusting immediately. Uh, I think it got a few drips when I wasn't around. Uh, uh, if this stove lasts a couple years, burning it a lot, I'll be happy with it. It might last 5 or 10, but you're not going to get 30 years of use out of it. <clears throat> the quality is uh, fair. Uh, one thing that happened almost immediately is uh, these gaskets fell off the door, and uh, which wasn't an issue, it didn't send, tend to smoke, but uh, once the glue was exposed, when you close the door after it cooled off, it glued the door closed and you have to pry it open. Eventually I had to scrape all the glue off, uh, and I don't plan on replacing those, it's just not smoking. Another area where there's potential for smoke but hasn't been an issue is right where the uh, there's an adapter to adapt the stove to the actual pipe and uh, there's a little crack there but since you have negative pressure in the pipe most of the time I haven't had any issue with it smoking uh, the other thing that's important I read online that someone did is these holes these vent holes there's upper and lower ones I drilled them out they're about three-eighths of an inch this lower one I drilled out each one half an inch someone recommended made a big difference because otherwise, even with uh, the doors or air vents fully open, it wasn't getting enough air. So uh, that was a simple solution. Takes half inch bit, kind of a pain, but uh, it really helps. So uh, overall, <clears throat> I think that's uh, this is a good stove for in a trail. It's small. If I can find my tape measure, I'll show you what we're looking at on measurements. So we got or you know wood under six, 16 inches or under is going to fit in there <clears throat> the box is about eight nine inches tall and then almost 12 inches wide so it's plenty big enough for a trailer if anything it'll run you out um, I'm in the fog so I can't burn it in the uh, summer I'm near the ocean I get in the fog so I need heat in the summer and it's too dry to burn a wood stove. So I do have this other propane stove I'm really happy with. And uh, if you like what I've told you about this uh, wood stove, I'm also including uh, how I uh, put this thing in. And I've, I've taken that shield off so I can show you how I did the roof. That'll be uh, later on in this video. But give me a thumbs up and then I'll do uh, a tutorial or at least... Uh, tell you how I put in this uh, propane stove which I need during the summer when the fog rolls in it gets cold during the summer and I can't be having a uh, wood fire because of the danger and also the fog could burn off and uh, the house would be overheated so anyway uh, that's my review of a guide gear wood stove so this is how the ceiling is constructed and how I penetrated it and what we have is about an eighth inch of plywood, then an inch of styrofoam, and then an eighth inch of plywood. And then we have what is basically, you can see it in there, uh, carpet padding. So it's a foam and that needs to be cut back. It's kind of a pain. And on top of that, you'll have uh, thin aluminum, which is the actual roofing. I believe that uh, foam padding's in there uh, to uh, protect the metal from rubbing on the wood roof and possibly a condensation thing but probably not so anyway uh, 
Then what we have is a, a shield, improvised shield to go in here, right where the combustion rules are. So it does, doesn't go all the ways up. It just goes beyond, a little ways beyond where the combustible roof is. So this is just a standard piece of uh, four inch flashing and it needs to be cut uh, slightly to get room for the pipe to pass forward. So that and then I put a bunch of screws up there to hold it in place. Pretty much it. And uh, you know, it, Certainly not the code. There's just uh, I wouldn't uh, leave large fires burning if you get a chimney fire. Uh, it's an issue. So this is a camping stove. Basically, it's not meant to be left unattended. So keep that in mind. So this is how the stove pipe is flashed from the outside. I have extra lengths of uh, pipe I bought already, but I haven't uh, needed them and don't plan on using them at this point. Uh, so anyway, the storm collar was a little bit loose and I had to crimp it and uh, I haven't caulked it and I haven't needed to and it's been raining so uh, I'm sure a little water is getting down there especially when I'm, I'm not here and not uh, burning the stove because there's evidence of drips of water haven't got in on the stove but uh, when the stove's going and it's raining it uh, hasn't been an issue at all so uh, that's how I got it flashed. So this is what it looks like with the storm collar raised. So that's just a standard jack. Uh, I don't know what more to say about that. And it's just been uh, silicone down and uh, screws, sh sheet metal screws ran. Oh, looks like I got every uh, three or four inches, which has been plenty so far on a flat roof. So anyway. So far, so good.